Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Whether you're at home or whether you're here, I hope that you'll enjoy the service and you'll join in the songs and the prayers. Unfortunately, we don't have a musician today, so we'll have to sing a cappella, but that's okay. We'll just have to raise our voices to God. With that, I'll give a territorial acknowledgement. <coughs> Our uh, church sits on the lands of many First Nations people. They include the Anishinaabe, <coughs> the uh, Atawandaran, and the Haudenosaunee people. They've cared for this land and it's, uh, all that's on it for many years before we arrived. And we pray that we'll always treat our First Nations brothers and sisters with respect and friendship. With that, I'll offer you the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Hail the day that sees him rise, Alleluia, to his throne above the skies, Alleluia, Christ the Lamb for sinners come, Whom he had chosen. 
After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. <clears throat> so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. When he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking upwards to heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way you saw him go into heaven. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks And now, a reading from the Revelation to St. John concerning the New Jerusalem. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb. <clears throat> and the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. Then the angel showed me the river of water, the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God, and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us.
with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is given <clears throat> today in the Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, Where are you going? Because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable to you, O Lord. Please be seated. <coughs> Today is the Sunday that falls between Ascension Day and Pentecost next week. At this past week's evening prayer, we read Luke's account of the Ascension. Jesus told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem. Something was going to happen. But they didn't know what. It was an in-between time. The church has three great festivals, Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. We prepare for Christmas with four Sundays of Advent, and for Easter with 40 days of Lent. However, today is just part of the Easter season. There's almost no build-up to Pentecost. It's an in-between time. And this morning, because it's an in-between time, we're going to look backwards as well as forwards. We first read Luke's recap of the disciples' last experience of the risen Christ, which Jan read to us from Acts chapter 1. But Luke added a significant detail. When the disciples gazed upwards into the skies, two angels in white appeared to them. This seems to mirror to me the transfiguration story, where, remember when Jesus went into the cloud, they saw two men with him, and those two men were thought to be Elijah and Moses. Of course, the great prophet Elijah also ascended to heaven in a fiery chariot. So clearly Luke knew how to maintain our interest in the Jesus story. Seminary professors talk about Luke's Gospel and Acts as Luke Book 1 and Book 2. Because Luke was a first-rate storyteller, if he lived today, I think he'd probably be a TV scriptwriter. So I'll imagine Luke and Acts as season one and two of a TV series. Season one ended with a cliffhanger. Jesus ascended into heaven, but no one knew what was going to happen next. Therefore, Luke starts season two in a typical TV fashion. He recaps the cliffhanger, gives us a few more details, but now the disciples are waiting in Jerusalem. Something's going to happen. They still don't know what. Next week at Pentecost, the disciples, now they'll be called apostles, will begin to spread the news of salvation. But right now, it's an in-between time. We know, because we all have read ahead, what, what the disciples were waiting for. They were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all told us at the beginning of their Gospels about John the Baptist's prediction. The one who was coming after Jesus would baptize not with water, but with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In that story, John then baptized Jesus in water, and then the Holy Spirit appeared in the form of a dove. But Luke and his fellow synoptic authors don't reveal much more about this mysterious Holy Spirit until Pentecost happened. So in order to try and understand who this uh, Holy Spirit might have been, we have to look at a different tradition, namely John's Gospel, which is why we had the Gospel I just read to you. That Gospel passage looks back to Jesus' final hours with his disciples, before his arrest. 
when Jesus had told the disciples he must go away and return to the Father. However, he said, the Holy Spirit would come in his place. Jesus called the Holy Spirit an advocate, or in some translations, a comforter or a guide. An advocate is someone who speaks or writes in support of someone else. Often we think of an advocate as being an advocate in a court, a court of law. Thus, Jesus promises the disciples the advocate will come after he's returned to the Father, as John puts it, or after he ascends into heaven, in Luke's words. Luke's words are more poetic, I think. However, they rely on the Errol run scientific view that heaven is a specific location above the skies. As an advocate, the Holy Spirit inspires us animates us to follow Christ now that his earthly ministry is over. That's how Pentecost fulfills the work that began at Easter, when the ministry of the earthly Jesus gave way to that of the eternal Christ. Our second reading is from the book of Revelation. Much of the book is notoriously hard to understand, but today's passage looks to, to a perfect future, when everything will be per, come to perfection. Actually, it's what Jewish prophets had long looked towards, though perhaps less poetically. I think, for example, of the passage in Isaiah 65, which we usually read in Advent, the one we call Glorious New Creation. I'll talk about the passage from Revelation at evening prayer this coming Wednesday. So to complete my comments about the in-between time between Ascension and Pentecost, Pentecost always occurs in May or early June. In our world, it's when students graduate from high schools, colleges, and universities. Graduates keep learning, but they act without supervision from teachers. Pentecost was graduation day for the disciples. That's when they graduated from being Jesus' students to independent apostles. They went into the world to proclaim Jesus on their own. But today is that Sunday between Ascension and Pentecost. We find the disciples are in a sort of limbo as they wait for the Holy Spirit to come. They must have wondered, what will that look like? And we also are in an in-between time ourselves, because we are in between the time of pandemic and what we think of as the new normal. But we don't really know what the new normal will look like, either in our lives or in our parish life. But the Holy Spirit isn't just about disciples. We use terms like inspiring or animating inspiring, enabling to describe the Holy Spirit. But that's the same Spirit that calls us to be advocates with, for Christ. Like the disciples, we don't yet know what that advocacy might look like. But I hope that today's visioning session will help us with that task, because it's an in-between time for us too. Therefore, like Peter and the other disciples, we wait for Pentecost next Sunday. So I leave you with a question. Are we ready for graduation, to act as apostles, as graduates for Christ? Or do we still feel like disciples, not yet ready to receive the Holy Spirit? We'd better make up our minds because graduation day is next Sunday. Amen. Wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Let us together proclaim our faith in God. We believe and trust in God the Creator. Source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in Jesus, God's Son, who took our human nature and taught us how to live. We believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to Him. It's in the faith of the Church. We believe and trust in one God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, a prayer for forgiveness. O oh God, gladly we live and move and have our being in you. Yet always in the midst of this creation glory, we see sin shadow and feel death's darkness. Around us in the earth, sea and sky, the abuse of matter. Beside us in the broken 
the hungry and the poor, the betrayal of one another, and often deep within us, a striving against your spirit. O Trinity of love, forgive us that we may forgive one another, heal us that we may be people of healing, and renew us that we also may be makers of peace. Amen. Sitting, standing, whatever you wish for the prayers of the people. Dear God, we thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your great love and care and for your sacrifice that we might have freedom in life. Forgive us when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all you do for us, and for all that you have given. Renew our spirits and fill us with your peace and joy. We give you peace, praise, and thanks for you alone are worthy. Today is Ascension Day. It is the celebration of Christ ascending into heaven after his death, burial, and resurrection, and it happens 40 days after Easter. After his resurrection, he appeared a few times to his disciples and others, such as when he appeared to Calliopus and his friend on the road to Emmaus that we read about several weeks ago. After these appearances, he was then taken up to heaven for the last time. Then two angels appeared and declared to his disciples that he had descended and that Jesus will return in glory. Lord, we pray for the sick, the homeless, the destitute, and those with mental and physical afflictions. We continue to pray for the leaders and citizens of Ukraine, as well as those affected by the senseless tragedies in Buffalo and in Texas this past week. Please comfort them and let them know that you are with them. We also pray for those who are seated in places of authority in this world. Please give them wisdom on the difficult situations they face. We have an election this week, so please get out and vote, as so many Canadian men and women fought for, and many lost their lives for your right and your privilege to do this. Many people in this world are not given that right and privilege. Lord, on days when everything seems to go wrong, help us to remember that you are always nearby to offer comfort. It is easy to get overwhelmed and feel lost and alone in this world, but deep down we know that we know that is never the case. You are always at the ready for help. We just need to remember to take a moment to stop, breathe, and pray. Amen. Now let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of fire, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, our creating Father and Mother, Jesus our brother and guide, the animating and inspiring Holy Spirit be with you and with all those you love, the seventh Sunday of Easter and always. Go in peace to the one who served the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.